general relativity, step by step. I've got this little formula here that tells me the alpha component of the rate of change with respect to proper time tor of the separation vector n. And of course we've got two components. We've got a real change here representing the fact that the these two little particles are actually uh, moving apart or that their, their, their separation vector is changing. And we've got a correction for the non-constant um, basis vectors in our coordinate system. So that's just a, a correction for the coordinate system. Of course, what I really want to do is to figure out the second derivative, d2n by d tau squared, component alpha, equals. And what, what the reason I want this, of course, is that I'm going to go back eventually to use, where is it? This equation here, which used the physics of geodesics. So I'm going to link the mathematics to the physics using this, this formula here. Okay, so what have I got? Well, that's equal to d by d tau of d n by d tau component alpha, which equals d by d tau of this term here dn alpha by d tau, which is this term here, plus n sigma u mu Christoffel alpha mu sigma. Uh, no, that should be a square bracket. Plus, plus a correction term for the fact that we have got coordinate systems that are themselves changing. So I need to add on another Christoffel symbol here. Alpha, let's call it sigma nu. U sigma. And then we need dn nu by d tau plus Christoffel nu beta gamma, let's say, u beta u gamma. Have I got any other brackets to close? No, I haven't. This term here is simply dn by d tau. This term here is the correction that we need. So I'm just taking this term. Th this term here is basically, well, that's just equal to dn by d tau. All I'm doing is using the definition of the Christoffel symbol to account for the change of coordinate system or coordinate bases as we move through space-time. Well, there's a hell of a lot going on here. Let's, uh, well, we, well, let's just expand it and see what happens. Let's just expand it. What a nightmare. Uh, I'm going to pinch in a little bit and do it bit by bit. D2n alpha. In fact, I'll pinch in a bit more. We've got d2n alpha by d tau squared, that term there, plus dn sigma by d tau u mu Christoffel alpha mu sigma. That's this term here, differentiating this one and leaving the other guys alone. Plus n sigma du mu by d tau Christoffel alpha mu sigma, which is this term here, this term here, uh, differentiating that one, plus n sigma u mu d by d tau of Christoffel alpha mu sigma. Good grief. Good grief. Plus this other stuff here. Uh, actually, that's not as bad as it looks, because um, we can just, um, there's no differentiation in there. I'll just, I'll just write out the terms. So, plus, I'll see if I can write it all out on one line. Plus, Christoffel, alpha, sigma, nu, u, sigma, and then this term here, dn, nu by d, tau, plus, Christoffel, alpha sigma nu, alpha sigma nu, u sigma, Christoffel, nu beta gamma, u beta u gamma. 
good grief. But it's still the same thing. We've got a real change plus a correction for the coordinate changes. Okay, now I can do a little tiny bit of simplification here. Because I'm going to observe, I'm going to observe, actually it's not obvious, oops, I'm going to observe that the terms with the derivatives of n, see if I can find them, Yeah, terms with derivative of n, that one and this one, are in fact the same. They don't look the same, because this one's got a sigma here, summed with a sigma here. And this one's got a new here, summed with a new here. But I can call what I like. I mean, I'm just using a squiggle like that, and I'm just going to use a squiggle like that. So these two terms are the same. Which is not obvious, it took me a bit of time to spot that. So I can rewrite my equation here. We now have d2n alpha by d tau squared, squared, plus two of these things, because the other one was the same. dn, and I may as well keep it as a sigma, could call it what I like, of course, d tau, u mu Christoffel, alpha mu uh, sigma. Yeah, that's right, because the sigma is sitting with that sigma there. So I've done that one, I've done this one, I've done this one which matches, what have I got left? Plus n sigma du mu by d tau alpha mu sigma. It's as well just to have a running check of what's going on here. Are these scalars? Uh, well no, the, the, the alpha is free here, so we've got the sigma and the sigma summing there. And that mu sums with, this mu here sums with that mu there. So we've just got a single free index alpha on the, on the top here. Where was I? I was calculating that. Plus n sigma u mu d Christoffel alpha mu sigma by d tau. Plus, we've already done that term. So it's this one next. I think that's the last one. Yeah. Plus Christoffel, just copying from here. Alpha. Sigma nu, u sigma, Christoffel again, nu, beta gamma, u beta, u gamma. Good grief. Good grief. Look at this. It's just going on and on and on, isn't it? But it's the same thing. We've got a real change, and here we've got a count which we have to make for our coordinate basis transformation. Um... Well, the next thing we have to do, the next thing we have to do is to simplify this term here, because what we've got is a, a rate of change of a Christoffel symbol with respect to proper time tor. So I'm going to need to change that, and I'll do that in the next screencast. But I'll stop here. Stop. It's already gone on too long, this one.